Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel. My name is Jerry. Thanks for coming back to another video. I was just looking out across this field wondering when I might be able to get in here and mow this. Oh, wait. Uh, wrong simulator. Um, so what am I doing? Um, we are in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And I'll just kind of walk through this uh, water puddle there. And um, I'm just playing around with the um, with the with the exterior views. The basically it's the drone cam that uh, you can use on your flights, and just kind of thinking about controller setups and all that kind of stuff for some of you new folks that might be new to Flight Sim, especially new to Flight Simulator 2020. And I would like to uh, would like to help you understand that maybe just a little bit better. We are here in a little small um, airport, private airport called Perry Park in Colorado. It is just south of my location. It's uh, south of Castle Rock, uh, Colorado. And I flew down here this morning while I was enjoying my coffee and landed here at this little strip and um, will be departing here and heading someplace else uh, momentarily. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about controllers because when I first uh, when I first downloaded, installed, um, fired up Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, obviously I had my controllers connected. My controllers consist of a CH Products Flight Sim yoke. Now this thing is old enough that it could actually go out and buy itself an alcoholic beverage if it chose to do so. It is, uh, it is well beyond 21 years of age. Um, I bought this when I moved to Colorado about 22 years ago, so it's probably pushing the 22-year mark uh, more so than maybe the 21-year mark, but I digress. And I also have a set of CH Products rudder pedals. Now, um, when I first purchased these uh, these pieces of hardware, um, I was, you know, kind of a, a young, starving IT, IT person, didn't have a whole lot of money. And so I and, and at that particular point in time, there wasn't a lot of choice in the ma different manufacturers of uh, flight sim hardware peripherals like this. And of course, nowadays, you've got so many choices uh, from GoFlight to, you know, SciTech to um, the new Honeycomb yoke that a lot of people are talking about. And those things are fantastic. Um, but as long as this thing keeps on ticking, I really can't justify replacing it because one, I am a little bit of a tightwad, and two, I have a wife that controls, uh, helps me control my budget, and especially being unemployed, that even makes even more uh, sense nowadays. But anyway, um, I've also got some external controllers. So I've got some jetliner setup stuff from GoFlight that I'm not really going to talk about because it's not working at this particular point in time until we get some drivers from GoFlight and also get the, uh, the aircraft to fly those. But what I have, what I use in my setup right now for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is essentially the CH Products yoke that I talked about, the CH Products um, rudder pedals, an Xbox controller, that, and I use the Xbox controller to basically move around in the outside world. I can I can move around, I can move forward, I can look up, I can look down, and um, just have all sorts of fun outside of the aircraft in this fashion. We can simulate a complete uh, aircraft inspection if we want to, you know, whatever whatever we want to do, or even just like I was doing before, just kind of take off and start uh, walking around in this entire world that we have. Um, I have yet to try to walk through my neighborhood. I might uh, might try to do that later, but that's not what this video is about. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and talk about controllers because, again, I wanted to make this video because some folks, if you have the older controllers, well, you might be just a bit stumped with what is going on and how you're supposed to set things up. So we'll get in the aircraft, um, and I suggest starting with the aircraft. I suggest starting with a single engine um, propeller type aircraft. This is my favorite aircraft, the Cessna 172, and it will do just fine for helping us to get our all of our controls that we need to be able to fly this aircraft uh, properly, properly and accurately, and all of that good stuff. Now, um, if we will go to hit your escape key and go to controls, and what you can do if you um, um, basically when you when you come into this screen for the first time, you're going to see the controllers that are connected 
to your system. Um, the keyboard and mouse may already default in quite a bit of information. Uh, I just more or less leave those as they are. I don't do a whole lot with the keyboard and mouse. Um, typically, typically I have various buttons and stuff like that programmed. Obviously, not everything is working at this particular time. But what we're really going to talk about is when you come in for the first time to my Xbox controller, it automatically populated with everything that I need to be able to do the types of walk arounds and uh, walks and look up, look down, move right, move left. All of that was pre-configured for me, so I did not have to do anything. And an Xbox controller is fairly inexpensive. Um, I've, I think I picked one up at Micro Center just a few years ago for probably less than $20. Um, the, the, the thing that sort of shocked me, I suppose, was uh, the CH Flight Sim yoke and my CH Pro pedals, both USB devices, have worked in all versions of both Microsoft Flight Simulator as well as P3D for, like I said, 21 years. They Even the latest and greatest version of P3D, P3D version 5, when I f installed that, booted it up, and went into controls, it already had things pre-populated such as the ailerons, the elevator, the um, uh, tow brakes, those kind of things were already ready to go. Um, here in this sim, because it is obviously the latest and greatest, it is the next generation flight sim from Microsoft. That Microsoft was uh, instrumental in, in making this hobby what it is today, I do, I do believe. When I fired it up, it basically didn't have anything set up in the system. All it did was it showed this generic picture um, and had nothing whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I even, because, hey, I'm a guy, typically we don't stop and ask for directions. We don't typically read the instruction book until we actually need to find something out. I fired it up, booted up uh, Flight Simulator 2020, got in the Cessna 172 at, uh, at Centennial Airport and couldn't basically throttles didn't work, my uh, elevator didn't work, my ailerons didn't work, nothing nothing worked. So then I had to go through the process of figuring out, okay, what is wrong? So I go into this control section. All of this information was essentially blanked out. I mean, it was, it essentially looked like this. If I switch this over to the default settings, this is what it looked like. So I had to go through and sort of painstakingly determine exactly what it was that I needed to be able to set up my controllers the way that I wanted to. So if we go back over here to the profile that I set up, CH Flight Sim Yoke USB profile, we have the various uh, categories that I suggest that you set up um, within your particular control setup so that you can utilize, especially if you have something similar to the CH products um, yoke. That way you can still move your, you can use your hat switch on the, on the type right portion to uh, pan the camera around in the cockpit. Obviously, you'll want to set up your ailerons, your elevator axes. Um, you'll want to set up your buttons for uh, decreasing the flaps, increasing the flaps, your elevator trim. There's a little trim wheel on the side of the CH products yoke that you can use to do that. And of course, toggle the landing gear. Of course, we're in an aircraft, the Cessna 172 does not have a retractable landing gear. So this is kind of a mute point. But obviously, if you fly some of the other aircraft that are default to Microsoft Flight Simulator, you'll want to go ahead and do that. And then, of course, um, you'll want to set up your mixture access, uh, your propeller RPM access if you're in an aircraft like the, um, uh, like the Beechcraft, something like that, or and also set up your throttle access. Now, obviously, the Cessna C-172 is a single engine aircraft, but I have been flying some of the, uh, some of the dual engine uh, aircraft and obviously you need both a throttle one and a throttle two and they happen to be the exact same axis it's just one throttle uh, control knob on the CH products um, yoke to control that so it's both the same thing so when you slide it up it basically is going to uh, accelerate both engines at the same time now you want to make sure that you use the access um, uh, identifier here because that way you get full range, full control throughout the full range of your slider, okay? 
Um, and let me just kind of switch back. We'll switch over here to default and I'll kind of show you what, um, what you can do to kind of help you, uh, help you uh, pick out the ones that you want. So when, if you come in here like I did, this is what you're going to see. It's going this section here is going to be blank. You're going to see this generic picture of, I believe this is the uh, Warthog um, uh, by SciTech, I think. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, um, that doesn't matter. So you come over here and you can go to Essentials. And basically the Essentials are the category or the filter of the things that you really need to be able to operate the aircraft. And um, for example, if we come up here and we search by name, we can um, uh, we can find that we have decreased throttle and increased throttle, and you just select those and pick the uh, pick the one that you want. We'll go actually we'll go with all um, because that way we need to see we need to see the axis. If you just do if you just do the um, if you just do the essentials, this will basically if you move the throttle lever all the way forward, it's going to give you 100% throttle. If you move it back 50%, you're still going to have 100% throttle until you bring it all the way back to zero. So you can't really fly that way. So go to all um, throttle one access. You just click in the box here and search by input. If you click this and you move your lever, it will automatically detect that we want to assign joystick uh, left axis Z and we can click validate and it will put that information into our settings for our controls. I'm just going to cancel this out because I'm not going to change my my settings. Now the same the same will apply for the CH products our CH products pedals uh, USB device if we come over here and if we look at, uh, at what I ha have assigned you'll see that I've assigned the left brake axis, the right brake axis. These are my toe brakes so that uh, so that I can slow down and then also my flight control surfaces i have set up a rudder axis so that i can basically um, both use the rudder in the air as well as on the ground to steer the aircraft and so here are my toe brakes toe brake right and toe brake left i also have uh, which i have not set up yet um, this throttle quadrant isn't working as of yet but I also have, uh, well, I have some other devices connected like the Logitech G27 racing wheel that I use for other simulation based games like Farming Simulator and Truck Sim. I tend not to unplug my devices because that is a good way to mess things up. And so I wish that there was maybe a feature where you could just tell this application to forget this device. Um, I think that exists in X-Plane, but it does not exist in P3D or in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And then I have the Razer Orb Weaver Chroma, and this is basically just a set of buttons that I can use to set up different views, and I will go through and get that set up. But if we go back to the, the pedals here, one thing that you're going to want to do, let me just scroll back over this direction, is you're going to you're going to want to adjust the sensitivity for these devices and the areas that I would suggest that you you set and, and this will be something that will probably you'll probably have to play with this you'll probably have to experiment to find out exactly what works best for you uh, for example with my with my toe brakes um, I didn't necessarily need to adjust the sensitivity for that I did put in a dead zone that way it will um, help to make sure that if I do have my feet on the pedals, uh, I've got a 4% dead zone. So if I do happen to move my foot or something like that, it's not going to activate, uh, it's not going to activate the, um, the access. Um, and then also with the rudder pedals, I did set up some sensitivity and I had to really dial this down to minus 65% to basically prevent the um, what I was finding is that it was set to zero percent. If I operated the access control, it, it was all or nothing. I mean, it was just basically if I move this and show you this, uh, move this to zero percent, which is the default setting. You see how this is just a straight line. So I mean, it is all or nothing, and um, it's very very difficult to control the aircraft in that fashion. So I found for my for my controller, uh, which again is kind of old. 65% uh, works really well. And if we come over here to the CH Flight Sim Yoke USB, 
and go to the same thing and look at the various axes. We've got the ailerons axis here, which controls the aircraft and turns and such. We've got the, uh, the, the elevator axis, which allows the aircraft to uh, climb or to descend. And again, I've got sensitivity set on these because um, if you don't do that, then you will, you will find that it may be difficult to fly. Now the dead zone, I found the dead zone, I did not need um, a dead zone uh, set up within the, within the elevator uh, portion. I've experimented with about four to five percent and realized that it wasn't necessary. And then of course, um, within the other axes, you've got your throttle. And I found that I didn't need a dead zone and I didn't need sensitivity because basically I want it to work within the full range of the axis itself. And then the other axis here is my uh, mixture axis. And again, I want that to be the full range that is available uh, within, within the sim. But I'll show if we knock this back down to, let's see, this is, this is the up and down. So if I knock this back down to zero, and then we go out, I'll demonstrate kind of what this behavior looks like. And we'll go back, we'll apply, and then we'll go back into the, into the aircraft. And then you can kind of see, I'll put my yoke back. And you can see that um, how it just how it just flicks over like that. I found that that was very difficult to uh, to control the aircraft in that fashion because you're you're turning you're turning and then all of a sudden it just goes full full hard left or full hard right. So that's really what I wanted to share with you all regarding controller setups. I'm going to go back in here and reset this the way that it was because otherwise I will have a heck of a time. Uh, trying to fly my aircraft out of uh, Perry Park here. So 65% was my magic number. And again, your mileage may vary. You may not need to set up quite, um, quite as an aggressive sensitivity, or you may find that your dead zone might need to be even greater than 4%. It might, if you have a really, uh, if you have, if your springs are worn out in your controller, whatever, whatever it might be, you might need to increase this even to 5%, 6%, something like this. But I find that, you know, a little bit gets you a fairly long way. So we'll go ahead and save this. I'm going to apply those settings back so that I do not lose those. And just thank you all so much for watching my videos. I hope that this has helped someone um, get their, maybe their older flight sim hardware working in the new sim. It absolutely does work. You've just got to do a little bit of extra work um, to make that happen. And um, until next time, I would hope that you um, enjoy this video. I hope that it's been helpful to you. If I can assist you with additional questions regarding your setup, within Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, or even P3D as far as that goes, uh, please feel free to uh, leave a comment down below or head over to Discord and message me on, the, on my Discord server, Grizzly Bear Sims Discord server, and I would be happy to try to help you so that you can get the most out of your simulation experience as well. Um, please like and subscribe to this video. I would appreciate that very much. It really does help motivate me. And thank you, uh, thank you again for watching. And God bless you all. Take care and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.